Are you experiencing chronic neck pain, specifically left-sided neck pain? Maybe even you're noticing some pain around the sternoclavicular joint or in the thoracic spine, so your mid-back, maybe even your SI joint. Well, you might have been to all the practitioners, you've been to therapy, and you still can't seem to resolve this. Have you ever thought that your stomach may be the issue? Hi, my name is Dr. Ariane Messimer. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, doctor of physical therapy, registered dietitian, and owner of the Movement Paradigm Integrative Health Center. And so often we are always chasing the pain, but where the pain is, is not the source of the problem. And this is yet another perfect example. So if you are chasing this pain of treating the SI joint on the left side over and over and over again without any results or treating the neck, going to PT, and it just seems to not resolve itself then we want to be actually thinking about what are the root causes and the stomach is in fact one of those root causes. So we're going to start with an assessment so that way you can just get an appreciation for the possibility of the stomach being a aspect of your pain. So we're going to use a couple assessments to see if the stomach is playing a part in your pain. So the first one is we'll do is left rotation. So I'm going to have you turn your head to the left and just see, is there any pain? Is there restriction? You can compare it to the right to see what that feels like. You can also side bend your head to the left. And then the other test we'll do is some rotation of the upper back. So I'm going to have you rotate to the left, see if there's stiffness or pain. Same thing, you can rotate to the right, and really we're just seeing based on the spine opening and closing if that changes your pain. Okay, so now, based on that assessment, now we'll move into assessing if the stomach is a part of it. So to orient yourself to the anatomy, think we have walking down the sternum, at the bottom of the sternum is the xiphoid process. Right around this area is our gastroesophageal junction where the esophagus moves into the stomach. So if you kind of take your hand, big flat hand, and you come into the rib cage on that left side and down below, it's going to come to about the first couple vertebrae here, a one and two lumbar vertebrae. You're just going to place your hand right in here. Okay, and you'll feel it, like I said, below the rib cage here and just maybe a little bit above. So from here, you're going to retest. So let's test the cervical spine first. Okay, does that improve? Does it change? You could, if your pain or discomfort was turning to the right, that's fine too. We're still testing left sided neck, but this is opening the spine, this is closing the spine. Okay, so see if there's any improvement there. Now we're gonna do our, our rotation. So rotating to the left, rotating to the right. Again, we're still testing left sided thoracic pain or discomfort. See if that improves it. If it does, then we know that there's a relationship and we know that there is a visceral component coming from the stomach. If you're having any SI joint pain on the left side, you can do repetitive motions to see if that's hurting. So you can think of forward bending or backward bending to see if that provokes your symptoms. And then you can do the same thing. Place your hand on your stomach and reassess that as well. So now we'll move into treatment. Assuming that your stomach is part of your cervical or thoracic or even SI joint pain, now we can begin to work on that movement. So if we kind of think of all of the visceral and fascial attachments, there is so much connection that's happening. And so when this starts to get really restricted, then we begin to have more and more issues, right? So we need our organs to move. Our organs are moving anywhere from one to three centimeters on average. With each breath, our diaphragm can move up to 10 centimeters. So we have a lot of movement that should be happening in the viscera. But if we have inflammation, if we have standard American diet, if we have chronic stress, all of these things are going to limit the natural mobility and motility of the organs. So we always want to think of breath as the foundation of the movement. But what we can do is begin to create a little bit of motion here. So What I'm going to have you do is just cross your hands over your chest here. So we're going to actually move into just a little bit. I'm going to bend back towards my right shoulder. Okay, I'm going to essentially bend backwards and a little bit of a side bend, not to cause any pain, just to open up this side here. Okay, and then as we do that, I'm going to take a nice breath in. I'm going to hold my breath for just a moment. And then I'm going to exhale 
to bring the ribs down. When you create that inhale, we're actually creating this really nice pressure. We're creating this really nice fascial stretch. What's interesting with the stomach is that we have different pressures that are working. So we have this negative pressure. We have a thoracic pressure with each breath. So it can cause some dysregulation in the stomach and the mobility here. So as we're doing this, we're thinking we're opening up that tissue, but we're using our breath to really emphasize it. So we're going to take a breath in. Hold, exhale, as you exhale, you're trying to bring the ribs down. So I'd recommend doing this three to five times. I'll do one more. Breath in, so I'm really expanding into here. You should feel that stretch. Exhale, say exhale and bringing the ribs down. Okay, so again, three to five repetitions, then retest that particular pattern. So now I would retest my left cervical and I did not have pain, but I did have a little restriction. And so now this feels a much more freer motion just by doing a few breaths here. So you wanna think of this as an assessment and then as a treatment and beginning to pair these two things together. So anytime we add mobility somewhere, we want to add stability and we want to get our nervous system to make change. So that means we're reprogramming and we're creating neuroplasticity. So to stabilize, there's lots of exercises you could do, but at the very minimum, what I would suggest is being able to stabilize your upper body. So let's say something like a table position. So on all fours, stabilizing and just using your breath. So you're utilizing the shoulder, utilizing the core, and you're utilizing your breath to create create that proper stability or sequencing. If you're doing something like for the SI joint, you might do a standing exercise, but ultimately we want to think about trying to reprogram. Okay. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, give it a like, give it a share. And if you tried it and you did see a difference, I'd love to hear your comments. Please feel free to share. It's always fun. And if this was helpful, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we have weekly tips on mindset, nutrition, movement. We also have an app, the Movement Paradigm app on Google and Apple. And we do monthly challenges. We have live Q&As. We have an amazing community. And it's really a way for you to begin to access whole body health. And if you need to individual attention on your health journey, please reach out to us. We're happy to do a discovery session and see how we can help you on your journey. Thank you as always.